A few months ago, I released a video on setting up Jellyfin on a Synology NAS using Container Manager, where I walk through the steps to configure Jellyfin so you can access your content remotely. However, if you have a Synology NAS that supports hardware transcoding, you may want to adjust your Jellyfin setup to take advantage of your hardware. In this video, I'll go over the steps you need to take to make that happen. To begin, if you're not sure whether your Synology NAS supports hardware transcoding, you can check by using this Plex NAS compatibility guide, which I'll link to in the description below. This is a Google Doc that displays both software and hardware transcoding capabilities of NAS devices from various manufacturers. In my case, I'm using a DS224 Plus, which does support hardware transcoding, so I'm all set. Once you've determined that your Synology NAS supports hardware transcoding, you can continue by opening DSM and ensure that Container Manager is installed. Next, open FileStation and create a Jellyfin folder within the Docker Shared folder. Inside the Jellyfin folder, create two subfolders, Cache and Config. Now open Control Panel Select Terminal and SNMP and enable the SSH service, which we'll use to get some information we'll need for configuring Jellyfin. After that, open Container Manager, select Project, and click Create. You want to give the project a name. Set the path to the Jellyfin folder that was just created, then select Create Docker Compose.yaml from the Source pull down menu and paste in the Docker Compose YAML configuration file, which you'll find in the video description. Next, you'll need to change the PUID and GUID values, which you can find by SSHing into your Synology NAS with the account you'd like to run Jellyfin under. Then run the ID command, which will give you the information needed. Replace the UID and GID placeholders in the configuration file with these values. You'll also want to update the TZ environment variable to match your local time zone. Now confirm the volumes listed in the configuration match the setup on your Synology NAS. These are the same volumes I used in my previous video, so I'm good to go. Lastly, to allow for hardware transcoding, you'll need to pass the video device drivers of the NAS to the Jellyfin container, which is handled by the Devices section. Once that is done, continue the setup by clicking Next. Then click Next on the Web Portal Settings window, and finally click Done to download the Jellyfin image and start the project. After the project is successfully built and running, you can open a new browser tab and connect to Jellyfin by entering in your Synology NAS IP address, followed by port 8096. You'll arrive at the Welcome to Jellyfin window, where you'll first need to select your preferred display language. Next, set up a Jellyfin admin account. Then add your media libraries by clicking Add Media Library and selecting the shared folders you've set up. Like my previous video, I'll first add a Movies folder, followed by a TV folder. Click Next through the remaining windows, then click Finish to complete the setup. Next, I'll log in, and since I'm using the same Movies and TV shared folders from my last video, some media will already be displayed. Next, I'll enable hardware transcoding by opening the Administration Dashboard and expand the Playback menu, which brings up the Transcoding section. Here, expand the Hardware Acceleration menu and select Intel QuickSync QSV. Then enable Hardware Decoding for the formats listed. These settings are commonly recommended for Intel-based CPUs, so I'd suggest using the same settings for your setup.
Now let's test transcoding. I'll play one of my YouTube videos that I uploaded to my media library, then click settings and playback info. Since the play method shows direct playing, no hardware transcoding is happening because the browser can play the video directly without converting it to another format. To force hardware transcoding, I'll change the video quality to 720p, 4 megabits per second. After a few seconds, the playback info screen will update to show that the play method is now transcoding with additional transcoding details displayed as well. For more information about the type of transcoding taking place, go back to the Administration dashboard, select Logs, and open the FFmpeg transcode log. Under the Stream Mapping section, you'll see that the H.264 native format is being converted to HEVC QSV, where QSV stands for Quick Sync Video, which is the hardware acceleration option we enabled earlier. Now that hardware transcoding is set up and functioning, let's finish by configuring remote access to Jellyfin. We'll start by setting up a DDNS hostname using Synology as the DDNS provider. Then set up a Let's Encrypt wildcard certificate from the security control panel. Finally, create a reverse proxy to use the Let's Encrypt wildcard certificate. In this setup, I'm adding Jellyfin to the beginning of the DDNS hostname we created earlier. Then assign the Jellyfin subdomain to the wildcard certificate. Lastly, configure port forwarding on your router to forward port 443 to your Synology NAS. Once all of this is set up, you'll be able to access Jellyfin remotely and securely with hardware transcoding enabled using the hostname you created. I went through the DDNS, Let's Encrypt wildcard certificate, and reverse proxy setup quickly, but for further details, check out the video linked on screen. Also, check out my previous Jellyfin video if you want to set up Jellyfin without hardware transcoding. If you'd like to support my work or hire me for a project, check out the links on screen or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.